At this point, how much is Bitcoin and the crypto space, space broadly just a macro trade? Thanks for having me. You know, I think Bitcoin and the crypto markets more broadly have certainly expanded into broader tech over this last cycle. And I think we're starting to see that get reflected when it comes to um, macro comments coming from Jerome Powell and sort of the general market sentiment tending to sort of edge away from risk. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue for you know the long term, but it certainly is, I think, a result of, of how the markets have behaved in the past 24 months. We also have crypto contributor Shanali Basak on set with us. Shanali, it definitely feels like uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell spoke and crypto listens. <laughs> crypto did listen. Even though it's trading lower than where it was a week ago, Katie, you do have that lift back up just a little bit today in the last 24 hours. Kendall, the, if you look at what's happening here, of course the macro is driving so much of the story, but there's also some single name events when you look at a lot of the tokens that are trading, Ethereum being one of them, when you see what happens to Avalanche on the downside, uh, some news over the weekend driving the price a lot lower. How much do the fundamentals matter here? You know, I think there are going to be short-term narrative-driven, you know, moments as there are with any sort of equity or, or asset class more broadly. However, the fundamentals, I think, continue to matter. I think that the long-term investor is still paying attention to the fundamentals, and that's really going to be driving a lot of investment. As far as investment goes, then, how much are you thinking about valuation? There's a lot of question about whether Ethereum just has a lot more room to run, given that run up with, in Bitcoin we've seen over the last several years. Is that something that you believe, or do you believe that the merge can create some more complications ahead? You know, I think the merge is a really big milestone for the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, you know, this, this transition, I think, is going to have a lot of ramifications. Um, whether that's related to institutions being able to, you know, allocate to Ethereum more um, heavily than they have in the past, as well as um, certain fundamentals around the issue issuance of Ethereum itself, I think this is going to be a really big milestone. It's it's unclear if that's, um, you know, being sort of reflected in the price of Ethereum today. That's something I certainly don't. Um, don't have the, the ability to sort of see into, but certainly think it's going to be a part, big part of the discussion in the next six months. Kendall, I want to talk more about institutions in the crypto space because a narrative that I've picked up on over the past few months is that this big volatility, this really dramatic drawdown that we've seen across the crypto landscape is going to scare off some more of those traditional players, those big institutional players. Has that been your sense as well? My sense is that a lot of institutions and enterprises more broadly have been getting really smart on crypto assets more broadly and are using this time as a way to implement strategies and sort of uh, figure out exactly what they what role they want to play in these markets. You know, even today we heard an announcement from Meta announcing the ability to post your NFTs across Instagram. I think that's a big sort of strategic move that's been in play for a number of months. And I think we'll see similar reflection on the institutional side as they've been putting sort of the pieces in place into what that looks like. Well, Kinjal, speaking of meta, if I think back to this time last year, or even six months ago, I was hearing a lot about the metaverse. I was hearing a lot about Web3. It feels like those conversations have sort of petered off as we've seen this big market volatility. When are we going to start to see a rejuvenation in that space? Does that ultimately tie back to what the Federal Reserve is going to do? Yeah, you know, it's it's difficult to know exactly when sort of markets will will um, come back to life. However, I will say that founders and teams continue to build in the Web3 space as well as the metaverse. There are a lot of really interesting projects that have been funded over the past 12 months that we're going to start to see execute and ship on their roadmaps. And I think we'll start to see some great um, engagement and use cases really come to light over the next uh, you know year, year and a half. Well, there's also just a lot of dry powder on the sidelines when you look at how much money has been raised in the venture capital industry. Is there an opportunity now that valuations seem to be stabilizing a little more? They've come down quite a bit. Where are you placing your bets? Yeah, we continue to think at Blockchain Capital that this is one of the most opportune periods to engage with bright founders that are really focused on the long term. 
you know, we're doubling down on infrastructure, I think, as a really key theme for us, whether that relates to scaling existing blockchains, privacy more broadly, powering consumer use cases. I think infrastructure is a really interesting space to be in right now and something that we're spending a lot of time on. I'm curious about some of the existing companies that you've placed your bets on over time. We're seeing some really interesting changes here in, in what some of them are doing. Think about Coinbase, for example, and how it says that more customers will be using its staking services. I'm curious as to how consumers are going to be interacting with some of these companies differently as we look to what crypto looks like coming out of this most recent winter. Yeah, I think companies like Coinbase are really trying to put their users in the best position given the market changes. So as staking becomes more of a mainstream use case, enabling their millions of users to be able to get access to those products, I think is a really big value prop for folks like Coinbase or other exchanges that have that ability in their in their um, you know product suite. On the other hand, we're seeing Entry points for retail users really proliferate across the open protocol ecosystem, whether that's using DeFi protocols or more consumer-oriented NFT communities. I think um, everyone's entry point into, into Web3 looks a little bit different right now, and so really trying to ensure that there's a, a, a place and a use case for, for everyone. And when it comes to Web3, I mean, I'm just fascinated by the idea of the internet on the blockchain. And I've heard it both ways, that you could see uh, some of these TradFi players come in, some of these more traditional companies that aren't necessarily crypto native come in and build Web3. I've also heard the case that, no, it has to be someone who's native to the crypto industry. Where do you fall on that debate? And when you think about the own bets, your own bets that you're placing, I mean, are you more likely to invest in a crypto native company or maybe someone with a little bit more experience coming from the realms of traditional finance? You know, I think every company is its own sort of use case to think through. However, I will say there is a certain something special that comes from being crypto native and really solving for pain points that you're seeing within this ecosystem. Crypto and Web3 more broadly is very focused around grassroots organization and community really giving ownership back to the users of the products that we see. And so I think being crypto native is really important to the ethos of how um, how you can build a product in crypto and how that really can scale over time. That's not to say that financial you know, institutions and sort of Web2 companies won't be able to build some really great products and, and ideas in the crypto space. But I will say that um, being digital and crypto, crypto native is certainly, I think, a unique um, advantage. And I'll put another question to you along those lines. You know, when you're invested in everything from Uniswap swap and Sushi Swap to Coinbase and Kraken, centralized or decentralized, which is the way of the future? You know, it it really is a spectrum. It's it's certainly not a um, black or white question in terms of you know whether the the world is going to look completely centralized or decentralized. And I think that's something that's really become clearer and clearer over the past few years. At Blockchain Capital and, and um, you know, more broadly thinking about the market, we really want to back uh, founders and products that are solving for customer pain points and for real problems that, that they're facing in the market. And I think that's going to continue to exist on the spectrum.